Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J.K.L. I'm the host of this podcast, I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand and watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And welcome to another episode of the Artist Friends Podcast. My name is Clyde J. Kale, and you are listening to episode 91 for April the 5th, 2021, our first episode for the month of April. And I'm here with my two best artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everyone. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. Glad to see you. Glad to have you join me. And I hope you uh, had a uh, happy Easter. Everybody have a good Easter? Yeah. Yeah. Peaceful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Before we got recorded, uh, folks, we were uh, telling stories about our kids, you know, growing up. <laughs> the thing. <laughs> Time almost got away from us. Since, Wait a minute. We better start recording this podcast. <laughs> we're having too much. For our listeners, if you go to www.talkartpodcast.com, that's talkartpodcast.com. You'll see the information link for our discussion videos. And this week, we are going to start the month off with talking a little bit about our studio practice and, uh, you know, how we create art and how we're motivated. And uh, two of the videos is from our friend Mikey of uh, Jerry's Artorama. Artorama. He talks about in the first one, uh little short 10 minute videos. The first one is uh, when you can call yourself an artist, Diane, when did you call yourself an artist or when did you feel? (laughs) That was a really hard thing for me. For some reason, I felt really, um, I don't know. It took me a long time to be able to call myself an artist. It probably wasn't until maybe five to seven years ago, something like that. Oh, really? Yeah. It was pretty recently. Like, not you know in comparison to how long I've been doing art <laughs> but I don't know I, I didn't have the confidence I guess it's just um I just didn't feel I felt like I had to reach a certain level I guess before I was I could do that before I could call myself an artist hmm. it was really strange yeah yeah but that's interesting yeah because yeah your art is so yeah good and, and you've got it <laughs> for a while and and that's interesting Constance, what about you? When did you start calling yourself an artist? Right from the get-go or did it take you a while? No, from the get-go when I was young. <laughs> I mean, even though I popped in and out of ma- making art or drawing or whatever, I always would pick up a pencil and practice. But, um, yeah, pretty much all my life I would call myself an artist. Hmm. I've, I've made art all my life, but I'll be honest with you. Uh, I... Uh, if I met strangers, complete strangers, they asked me what I do for a living or, you know, I would, before I would never say that as an artist, 
but it's only been recently. It was, it was after when we took that Paul Klein course. You know, I don't know if you guys remember when the, I made a statement or something. I said, I was a, uh, a beginning artist and right in front of everybody. Remember Paul cut me down. He says, so you only recently started making art. Well, no, I've been doing art my whole life. <laughs> Not a beginning artist. You're an emerging artist. Oh, okay. So, you know, I had to learn all the terminology. And it wasn't until after completing the course that I was so motivated that I went out and got some business cards made, made up business cards that said, I'm an artist. And now I confidently uh, will, you know, hand out business cards. Strangers ask me what, what I do. I said, like, you know, I go get my hair cut and at least before the pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> and they would say, well, so what do you do? And I said, oh, I'm an artist. Oh, really? And I'd pull a bit business card out and hand it to them. Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> But I did not feel like you, Diane. I didn't feel confident. You know, I, I just, I was a guy that drew, that could draw and could paint once in a while. Of course, there for about 26 years, 27 years, I didn't do anything <laughs> until my daughter started harping on me to get me started up again. But um, yeah, I was just, it was just something that I did. <laughs> I had a talent, yeah. but I didn't think of it as, 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 a, uh, as a career or as a living. And maybe it was because I didn't have the confidence and uh, meeting you guys. Thank you two both have given me the confidence. Yeah, I'm an artist. <laughs> I, and I like the uh, Mikey's uh, definition. He says, basically, says, if you create art, you're an artist, period. You don't need somebody to tell you that. If you draw or paint and, or something, and it doesn't make any difference if, if people think it's think, – think it's good or not the fact that you created it you're an artist that's an art that's an artist you know and of course there's different levels of artists but still the ba and in, in the basic sense you're an artist and for some of our listeners out there that are artists that don't call themselves artists you're an artist have <laughs> yeah show your work to the people let, let people know and the uh, the second video from mikey i really like when he's talking about some of the uh, materials is how the up your game, up your art game. And, um, Diane, was you familiar with some of those materials that he was presenting, you know, in, in that video? Or? Yeah, I haven't used all of them, but I, I, um, I knew about them all. Um, but I think that's kind of, you, you go through like the catalogs or, you know, online to these art stores, supply stores, and <laughs> you see all the different um, surfaces you can work on, all the different mediums you can use i mean there's like a, a, a bunches of different manufacturers for all that stuff <clears throat> so it's and then once in a while you might try something new you know see what it's like you heard somebody talk about it <laughs> suggested or and you say well okay i'll try it and see what happens but so it's all my I, it's, recommendations come from you too and <laughs> The, the materials that, that both of these have, uh, have uh, mentioned to me, recommended, 100%. And I, I'm not, I myself, I'm not prone to experiment. I really, I, I, I don't like spending money on something and have it turned out really like crap. I, uh, so if, if, if enough people uh, say, yeah, this is good, try it, give it a, then okay, I'll, I'll give it a shot. And I've been very lucky. Things have worked out really well. Um, Constance, what about you? You uh, recognize some of the materials that he was talking about? Yeah, uh, I had bought some of that Chelsea Chelsea stuff. Um, I did know about the difference between, between the oil primed and the acrylic primed canvases, but I've always used acrylic primer until lately when I experimented with some rabbit skin glue and that stuff you mix into it for the just so uh, I'm not really happy with that service, so I don't know if I'm going to revisit that or not. Uh, but it was fun to experiment. I mean, how do you know you like something or don't like it until you try it? You know, so. Yep. And uh, the I was really interested when he was talking about between the, the oil paints and the acrylic paints because since I never had a, you know, I haven't had a good a budget, you know, money to to uh, purchase really you know outstanding material i've always used uh stretch canvases 
hope my listeners don't get get upset at this. When I because I didn't have a budget, and when I started painting again, of course I bought my materials from Walmart, and I used to buy those Walmart stretch canvases, which were made in China. They're okay for painting acrylic, but when I started to paint oil, I noticed that the kind of the camera that kind of soaked up the oil. So until I was able to buy me some good canvases, which I did, I found a, a company out in California that makes those, um, you know, called, I think artist brand, something like that. Uh, they make good, their uh, double, double primed uh, canvases. And those are just exceptional for my oil paints. But what I would get with the cheap ones is that I would have to paint a, an acrylic, um, uh, glaze over the top of them before I even started painting oil paints. And luckily I don't have very many of those left. I've got the good kind now. So, well, what I like to do is sometimes though when I'm in a pinch and I want to paint and I don't have the size or whatever, I will go to Walmart's and get the frames and peel the canvas that they have on there off and stretch some cotton duck or, cause you can get cotton duck there too that's good enough to paint on so, and do your own gessoing yourself or linen. You know, sometimes I'll get linen, but you can't get what linen, linen at like that at Walmart, but you can get it, you know, from different places and stretch it and then well, gesso it yourself. Cause I like that surface better than, than the, and the stuff, the, the canvas that they put on those Walmart things. I don't know what that stuff is made of. It looks like cheesecloth with, Something sprayed over the top of it, <laughs> so I always peel that off and restretch it does, the frame. What's interesting is the canvases that canvases I ordered from that company out in California. Uh, they're only they only cost about a dollar more than the can the Walmart. So hey, it's worth it. Yeah, yeah. But if you're in a pinch and you want to paint something, if you have the equipment to stretch the canvas, you can run down there and get some. Yeah. And just peel that stuff off and put your own on, and then within a day you can have the canvas ready to paint on. When I was a kid, I used to stretch, but no, I don't have the patience. I don't do that now. <laughs> I do like I do like to stretch on canvases and I, linen. I don't get buy the frames, and then buy the canvas in a row, and then I used to stretch it, and I take tacks and you know and, and, and nail it down. It's because I couldn't. I used a staple gun. <laughs> Lucky I had to borrow money from my mother, you know, to buy. So I had to, uh, yeah. I couldn't even get a staple gun. I had to use tacks with a hammer. <laughs> yeah, I have some tacks and I have, I've started doing the tack thing, but I always had the staple gun and before, you know, cause it was cheaper to just buy the, well, let me tell you, when I first started out, I didn't even use that. I, <laughs> I used to live on this plum this uh, orchard that had plums, a plum orchard out in California. And they would prop the branches up with this wood when they started getting really heavy with the plums. I stole those prop, prop what they used to prop those things with and made stretchers out of them and stretched my canvas on that for, you know, cause I was broke then when you're in, you're that young and you're in college, you're broke, you know, so. I just did what I could to make something to paint on, you know. I when I was in college, I painted on brown paper. Yeah, you know, you thought it was <laughs> just, that. you know, seal it and paint it on that. Like, um, I used to use a, um, the uh, paper bags that they have in the grocery stores. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just so you can, you can just sell that and it works pretty good? Yeah, you have to, I, I use rabbit skin glue on them and, um, uh, a varnish and it would seal it seal the surface and then then gesso on top of it and paint hmm. yeah <laughs> i used to go into like secondhand stores too and get old sheets <laughs> and stretch the sheets on i mean i couldn't afford stuff either so i was that's what i was doing you get really inventive <clears throat> when you're like that. yeah it works it's good enough i mean it's you know i mean you're just learning anyway so it's not stuff that's going to be like a masterpiece or anything anyhow yeah, yeah. so you know, it's, but yeah, I, you know, I've used those cheaper Walmart things and, <laughs> but yeah, you know, that, whatever, <laughs> it all works. To yeah. Some extent it does. <clears throat> for what you're doing. This, I mean, this, this, this course with Kelly Folsom, 
I use this uh, they're called canvas sheets. What they are is just a just a, a pad of uh, 11 by 14, and I can, mm -hmm. I can wrap them around a, a board for backing and tape it. You know, so I get the eight eight by ten size. And when I get done, I just have to just you know when it's dry, I just unwrap it and take a pair of scissors and you know cut it out. And they're good enough because it's a good enough surface uh, surface where it accepts the oil and it you know. Mm -hmm. Painting service, and they're you, you know, they're like fifteen dollars for a pad of twenty five of them, yeah, you know, in a pad. So they, uh, well, I think the canvas underneath those are better than the stuff at Walmart. But yeah, I was I ripped that stuff off of the, off the strength of wires <laughs> and put cotton duck on it, you know. Now the and then then we had a couple of videos from Stephen Bauman. I love that video when he says, stop painting things. So, Diane, do you paint things? No, not generally. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, it's true. Like, you usually, you usually are geared towards um, the way light hits something or um, shadows or, you don't, you, I don't, like, when you're painting, you, you block stuff in. You don't really look at objects as, as yeah. like, you kind of block it in and you break it down further and further so it's you're not really looking at trees or you know a house or whatever you're painting you're just you're trying to figure out what color is that bark <laughs> and the, the way the light hits things and shadows and things you're not where he's coming from he said it's the it's, it's the light in the shadows you know that mm -hmm. make make up the painting and if you sit there and you try to you try to render that bottle and you know, yeah, it may look like a bottle but if you don't really catch the way the light hits the hits the bottle and bounces off. Maybe the uh, you know the shadow that give you the the, the form. Uh, it's you know so that's what that's what you should be looking at. And that that's the emphasis of, uh, emphasis of his of his video. And uh, then his next step, he re reemphasized. He we had gone through this before. His twelve keys. Of course, these are his recommendations. There's obviously more, but his recommendation, 12 keys to a successful painting. And uh, he uh, gave a little more insight as to, you know, how he, how he came, you know, came up with those. And, you know, one day, not now, I don't think I'm ready, but one day I think I'm going to sign up with some coaching with Stefan Bauman because I really like his approach, which is why I like Kelly's approach because hers is, you can tell they were taught by, they follow the old masters, the, the techniques of the masters, which, you know, is it, not taught anymore, you know, and, and the, the emphasis of, uh, you know, like when he, you know, he talks about, you know, artists say, well, you know, I want to learn how to paint loose. But then when he tells them what to do, they say, well, wait, that's sloppy. That's not, <laughs> they're missing the whole point. Of, you know, you put, uh, uh, one stroke down, you know, with, with, with your paint. Yeah, I'm kind of of the school that if you want a photograph of something, take the camera out and get a photograph. But paintings to me should be painterly. I've got a lot of respect for the, the realism artist. Oh yeah. It's not an easy thing to do, but I mean, it's, it's what, that's why there's so many different artists with so many different styles is because you paint in the style that you like to paint in, even though, Somebody might be painting the same painting as you are. You're, it's going to look, it's going to have a different result in the end because of your painting style. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's like with this, this classes with Kelly, you know, uh, she'll, she'll record her, you know, in a, in a vital art session, 30 minute video. And she'll, she'll uh, have the, uh, you know, she'll paint from live while she's recording a video, but then for the lesson, We'll take a photograph of the setting, two photographs, photograph of the setting, and then a photograph of her painting, the, the results so for us to, you know, to look at and then encourage us to post it on the, on their private, you know, the vital arts, uh, webpage, you know, our, um, uh, Facebook page. And it is so interesting to see the different styles of the, it's the same, same, mm -hmm. same items, but some people just, way you know in my opinion way off and other people are you can see some people who really try to do it real realistic and 
and real tight. That's, yeah, that's people's different people's painting styles. That's all. You can tell it's been hours, but then, you know, and Kelly has mentioned in her video, you know, that that you should try to limit your time. And by limiting your, your, your amount of time you spend on it and also doing it, doing it uh, a la prima, um, you're learning to make every brush stroke count, make every mark count, and it will improve. And I started following that, and it is so true, you know. So I've, most of the lessons, I usually end up c- completing them within uh, 40 minutes to an hour. As before... I was really trying to get it exactly like, you know, and it would be two hours later, you know, and then I would let it dry a little bit and then I'd go back to it. No, 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 That's, yeah, <laughs> that's not the point of the lesson. The point of the lesson is, <laughs> so, um, and incorporate into all that is, you know, the 12 keys of Stephen Bauman, you know, looking for the light and the, and the, and the composition. And what's nice is, when you're doing Kelly's lesson, she's already handled the composition. You don't have to worry about that. The composition is all, <laughs> you know, correct. Yeah. But yeah, like but I think you can learn from seeing her setups. Absolutely. It helps you get to that place where you want to be when you set something up yourself. In fact, like I said, a good, a, a good test for me, is if she's, if she's a good teacher and the reason why I like her and the reason why I follow S- Stephen Bauman, I've been able to incorporate in my independent works, the things they talk about, not always a hundred percent, but far. I mean, I've, I have felt like I've been so very successful. I've crossed, cr- crossed, the uh, you know, a raised the bar with each painting as Stephen Bauman says, is each pain is practice for the next pain. <laughs> yeah, it is. Diane, you want to add to this? You've been kind of quiet. <laughs> um, no, I think it's it's when you well when you work out a prima and you're limiting your time. You're you're um, it's it's the same way with plain air painting. It forces you to not think so much <clears throat> and to. Um, eliminate a lot of the the detail that you wouldn't have time for so it forces you to um, focus on the things that are necessary to depict what you're trying to show Mm -hmm. you know and and so you save your brush strokes and you're um, you're not nitpicking at every little detail and you know trying to get every little hair or whatever (laughs) you know it's like yeah by the time you do all that the light's (laughs) changed and you're in trouble (laughs) yeah so, I mean, there's, there's value in doing that. And, well, that's like I've been taking this, um, you know, online course uh, with Steve Houston, the drawing, <laughs> drawing course, and that's what he talks about. He emphasizes the, uh, you, uh, uh, when you sit, put a time limit on yourself, you, he's been doing these uh, every Thursday. He calls them jaw and draw. And he'll put <laughs> a Zoom screen. And as he's talking, we're supposed to be drawing that. If, if we participate in the, in the live session and I've done that the last, um, a couple of times and it's just been wonderful. His, his sessions are only an hour long. So I give myself, I work on, I've been working charcoal and I give myself until, uh, you know, the hour's up. And then when he says goodbye, that's it. I don't touch it anymore. Rather if I like it or not. And there's, Oh God, I want to go back and I want to correct this. I want to correct that. <laughs> that's not the point the point is to you know to give yourself uh, to learn to focus your eye on the, what's the form what's important what line you know and, and then his, his philosophy is you know make every mark count just like uh, kelly Folsom says make every brush stroke count and uh stephen bauman says make luscious paint count <laughs> he is about the luscious paint brushes paint paint strokes yeah Paint with luscious paint. Kelly, he says juicy paint. Yeah. Juicy, yeah, juicy. <laughs> it's so juicy. <laughs> yeah. and but I think it's kind of true when you get to the highlights. Sometimes when you put some extra paint on there, because then with the Isla Prima, you if you've got already got paint there and you don't, you know, you save that highlight spot for the highlight, you know, but yep. you usually have to put on extra to get it to stick. <laughs> But uh, that gets into, you know, when I, I, I mentioned the, you know, the, the quirky things of an artist. 
that's it. Most, you know, the viewers, you know, they just see the end result, but they don't see the quirky, you know, <laughs> that as we're, as we're going, like, you know, I've heard different artists you know, saying, I've, I've said it myself, man, I struggled with this. And, and of course a stranger would go struggle. Why? What, 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 what was the struggle? You know, and <laughs> don't, you know, yeah, you know what? Uh, Some yeah. paintings you can just pen finish them just like that, and then other paintings you'll set up and or do, and you'll just it'll fight you tooth and nail the whole until you get it finished. You know, so yep, yeah, every painting's different. It gets to especially the young artists starting starting out. They said, "How do you know when it's done?" Well, that comes from and Kelly uh, Folsom emphasizes this. You got to put the brush miles in. Experience. That's what I was say. <laughs> <clears throat> no, you will know when it's done, when you've been doing it for a while and you, you reach a certain point that you just, okay, it's done. I have a tendency, if I'm not careful, was I'll go back and work it over when I should just not touch it. <laughs> yeah. I pulled one off the easel today. I didn't like where it was going, so I just snatched off of there and rubbed paint all over the front of it and cover it up. <laughs> We're probably going to have to sand it down a little bit. Yeah. Well, I've got, I didn't think I would do this, but I'll admit I've done a couple that I've had. I've painted over the top. I've painted something else over the top. I needed the canvas. <laughs> the canvas panel. Yeah. Canvas panels are easy to do that. Yeah. Like you said, you just, you know, sand, uh, if you got some bumps on there, just sand down the bumps and put some coated gesso on it and you're good to go. <laughs> well, if it's oil paint, you can't put a gesso on it. <laughs> Unless it's oil prime, I guess. Can you put oil prime just so on? Uh, the only just so I've ever had has been acrylic. If you sand like, it, it'll give it back a tooth for the gesso to stick to. You can't do that if you varnish the painting, though. It doesn't. Well, right. It, it'll work for a while, but it'll probably fall. You know, flake off, off after a while. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I just. Um, Most of mine is ones that I I did oil on, on top of acrylic. You know, these were acrylic paintings, so yeah. I've never had to, uh, you know, what I've done is I'll, I, the one, the one that I recently that I, I reused the canvas was, uh, <clears throat> there with the acrylic, it was very flat. There wasn't very many bumps. So I didn't have to. And then I just, yeah. it, I think I used an acrylic white to cover it all up. And then after it got dried, then I painted the oil and it worked just fine. And the oil stuck to it. And, you know, it. Yeah. You can't put go oils and then acrylics but you can go acrylics and then oils so i have so my oil. one of my acrylic paintings the abstract ones i sanded them down just for effect you know you know i that one painting the few episodes i talked about that i entered in a contest at the one abstract that i've done that i won an award for the abstract that my mother didn't like i was talking to her the other day and i told her i said mom <laughs> it won or i said i don't care <laughs> I want to buy it, but there's <clears throat> no paint on there, and no, <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't that 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 was a good painting. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody has their own taste, so she is a represent a representational art lover. She, if she can't figure out what it is, she don't like it. <laughs> no matter how pretty the colors are, yeah, you because know, she did admit, it. yeah, they are pretty colors, but now. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> not for her <laughs> okay let's wrap this episode up i hope our listeners enjoyed some of our quirky talk of uh you know being an artist and talking about art art material and uh, this has been episode 91 for august for august april the 5th 2021 and i've been talking here with diane hunt and constance bronson and i'm going to say bye bye to diane and bye to constance let diane say goodbye to everybody Bye, Clyde. Bye, Constance. Good night, everyone. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Diane. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening. As always, I second that. Thank you so much for listening. And please give us some feedback. Uh, give us a star, a uh, you know, star rating, and a uh, a thumbs up. However, you uh, listen to the podcast. And if you're an artist and you feel uh, comfortable about joining us, please join us. Hey. Uh, at www.talkartpodcast.com at talkartpodcast.com 
there's the uh, room link. Now I post every every week what we're going to uh, discuss, and the Zoom room information is there for you to uh, join us in the time. Bye bye, folks. Until next episode. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronson at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash c-b-r-o-s-n-a-n-s Clyde J. Kell at www.cjkaleartworks.com If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com if you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or a star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.